Welcome to Zion's Cause Baptist Church. Celebrating the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for 135 years. We are glad that you are with us today. We invite you to join with us in prayer. Praise and worship of our Lord and Savior. And grow with us as we receive the message today from God's Word. church this morning those that are watching with us this morning we welcome you in stand if you can and brother Barry is going to begin in leading us this morning in worship Good to see you this morning. A little cooler today, right? Amen. Amen. Remain standing with us as we just begin singing our next song this morning. Let's sing that together. Who breaks the fight? the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole world with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in all Set free. 
Jesus, I see for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. done for you this morning that's why we sing take a moment and just welcome those around you this morning say hello to those that are with you this morning When all I see is 
hands of cross, God, you see the empty Church, you may be seated this morning, Brother Charles. Amen. Amen. So good to see you. Glad to have you with us today as we are here. And I want to shout out to those who are watching virtually today, whether on our YouTube Live or on Mediacom. We just want to say good morning to all of you. Glad to see you here uh, in the Lord's house. Let's go to him in a word of prayer. Gracious Father, as we bow before you, we are so thankful. Uh, that we have found favor in your sight and that we belong to you. We belong to you. Father, that is encouragement for any believer in Jesus Christ. And Father, we're so thankful for those that are here in this sanctuary as those that are watching on YouTube as well as Mediacom Channel 8 today. And let us worship together and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we ask. And amen. Amen. Well, our special music this morning we're going to do, we invite you to sing along as well. And we have some uh, wonderful couple that are watching this morning. So this is for, for Brother Danny and, and Miss Brenda as we sing that wonderful old hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. And on a hill far away stood rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the old rugged cross and what that means to us. And Father, we get excited knowing that one day we will see you and see you in heaven. And Father, we're just thankful for what you have done for us, Father, that you lived, you died, and you rose again. And what that means to us as Christians, help us to live that message of that good news out. Father, be with our pastors. He comes and brings the message this morning. Father, we just pray that we'll be changed and we'll leave here better than when we came in. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Barry, Brother Jason, our praise team, praise band today, and definitely uh, love the old rugged cross, and as we think of what the cross means to us as a believer in Jesus Christ, all because of the cross, folks, that we're able to stand before you today, all because of the cross, you're able to listen to us as we share the word of God today, Jesus Christ dying on uh, the cross for our sins. Today, we're going to continue on in our spiritual disciplines. Uh, the sermon series that we're talking about. And today we're going to be talking about stewardship. Now, stewardship is something that really all of these that we have been preaching about is connected, is connected. And when it comes to spiritual disciplines, a uh, professor at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary by the name of Dr. Donald Whitney, uh, he has written a book in, re in regards to this, and we share just a few of his thoughts today as we begin uh, our, our message today on the discipline of stewardship. Stewardship. Why do we need to be disciplined in our life? Because we deal with sin. You and I, we deal with sin every day. And sin makes, as to, according to Dr. Whitney, sin makes us selfish. And then whenever we get selfish, we begin to waste our life. That is why we have Christian disciplines. That's why we have spiritual disciplines. Because in the light of the gospel, 
In the light of the gospel, we look at things differently. We look at our life differently. We look with what we have been blessed with differently because we want to live our life, as Dr. Whitney says, into a God-glorifying, gospel-driven way. And we're going to be sharing with that today. And we're going to be looking. You know, last Sunday as we preached on Father's Day, we was in Luke chapter 15, that great passage of Scripture about the prodigal son. And we shared with you about the Father and what the Father is and that of that great passage of Scripture. Here we're jumping over a few more chapters into that of uh, Luke chapter 19. I also want to share with you today something on a, a, a sublatory note as we think of of the overturn of that of Roe v. Wade. You know, I made a, ten, a, a mention of that here a few months ago uh, in our message here that it is a step in the right direction. Well, we have made that step in the right direction. Now, I don't come to you as political. I come to you as theological. This is what it means to me theologically in overturning that of, of Roe v. Wade. Now, political, I'm not a political pundit. As you well know, I do not use this platform uh, to express uh, political views because uh, the politi p politics is not my savior. All right? The party is not my Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and that is what I live about, and that is what I proclaim, and that is the reason why 30 years ago, as I was ordained of the Beulah Baptist Church in Hickman County, Kentucky, uh, I used this as a platform to proclaim Jesus Christ. But I am thankful for that theologically and what it means to that of the unborn. And so we share that, we share that with you today. Now, now, as we think of the spiritual discipline, uh, the Christian discipline of that of stewardship, we're going to look at Luke chapter 19, and we're going to read this parable, another long parable, as Luke chapter 15 was a very, very long parable. It says, now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable. Notice, because, because he was near Jerusalem. Jesus was near Jerusalem and because, notice the emphasis there in the Word of God, and because they, they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. All right, Jesus is fixing to be king of kings and lord of lords, and Jesus is saying, now, hey, guys, we got to put the brakes on here because they thought it's going to appear immediately. They say, okay, Jesus is, is fixed to become King Jesus to all the world, and we're fixing to see these things. I mean, the book of the Revelation is going to uh, unfold from, from our very eyes, even though it had not been even written yet at this particular time. But Jesus, the reason why, he spoke another parable. Oh, you would like for it to be the end, but it's not the end. There is something for here for you to do in verse 11, but then also not only for them, but also for us, for us. And in verse number 12, he said, therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants and delivered to them 10 minas. And said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Does this not sound somewhat like Jesus Christ? Yes, it is about Jesus Christ. That's why he's speaking another parable. He's, going, he's telling how things are going to happen, how things are going to unfold. And so what it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded his servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Master, you're Mina, has earned ten minas. Then he said, and he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in very little, you have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to them, You also be over five cities. Then another came, says, Sir, Master, here is your mina, which I have put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you, because you're an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to them, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. 
Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has ten minas. But they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. For I say to you that everyone who has will be given. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, Father, just open our eyes to this passage of Scripture, this parable given to that of Jesus Christ many, many years ago. And Father, it is still real for us today. The message is here for us today. And so, Father, help us to do your business. Help us to do the work that you have for us today. In Jesus' name we ask, and amen. Amen. Now, when we look at this passage of Scripture, the first thing that it says, it talks about here, Jesus sharing this parable, but it's all about these words. Do business till I come. Remember, they're, they're, re they're ready for it all to be over. They're ready for Jesus Christ to set up his kingdom and all these things. And Jesus is saying, no, it's, it's going to be a long, long time before that, that occurs, before that happens. But there is work for you to do right now. Just like the church, as Jesus Christ speaks to the church today, there is still work for you and I to do right now. Right now, as, as we think upon this, look what he says here in this passage of Scripture. He says, therefore, he said, a certain nobleman, Jesus Christ talking about himself, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. I mean, this is, this is the picture about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came here the first time, and what did they do? They killed him. They crucified him. They says, we don't want you anything about you. But Jesus Christ says, yes, but I will return. I will return. And so as Jesus begins to talk about this parable, it says, he, so he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas. Ten, this was a bag of money, okay? 10 servants, each one of them gets a bag of money. And he says to them, do business till I come. Do business till I come. So they receive a bag full of money <coughs> that they are to work on until he returns. He gave them that. He gave them that. Well, as we are here today, whether you're in this sanctuary or you're listening to us virtually right now, God has given to us our abilities, our talents as we call them. God has given to you and me our resources. God has also given to you and me time in this world. Those three things, among other things, God has given to you and me right now, which are of great value in our lives. Great value. But they are of greater value whenever we use them for Jesus Christ. Whenever we use them for God. Whenever we use them for that of the church. And notice the passage of Scripture. Jesus says here, do business till I come. So as I think, let's just roll back the calendar of, of this past week. I'm very thankful here at Zion's College. We were very, very busy here at the, this last week. We had, uh, we had a group from Kansas City, Missouri to come in and to help in the long-term recovery, and we were able to help families. We also had another group uh, from Fairview Baptist Church in Mount Vernon, Kentucky to come down and to help us. There was a total of 25 of them uh, that came in and worked and worked in the community here that of, of Marshall County uh, painting. We painted a whole house, uh, the, all the interior, counting the garage this week. We helped with removal of uh, so, chainsaw work, skid steers work. Uh, we worked heavily. We also worked inside a home that uh, had been ravaged by the tornado and worked on the outside and putting vinyl siding up. Uh, we also had a chaplaincy team that was going out and, and helping those and talking to those uh, who had just, uh, just a lot of a lot of things they wanted to talk about. So four different teams were, were working. I thank for everyone here that helped in that because we had people coming out early in the morning preparing food for them, preparing lunch, and preparing uh, dinner for them. And I appreciate all that went into that and everyone that, that helped. I had others that were doing some cleaning and some, some various different things for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. And those, both those teams bragged on Zion's cause 
of how that we helped them and were there for them. And they said, Brother, it is, it is so nice to come here and to be here. One was a return trip. Uh, the other one was their first time there. And they would just tell the people of Zion's Cause, we thank them so, so very much for their hospitality and opening their doors. Why? Do business till I come. Do business. And we need to think about the business of God in our life. We need to think about those abilities, those talents that God has given to you. And all of us have different talents. All of us have different, different abilities there. That is the way God designed us. That is the way God created us. That's the way that, that he made us. That all of us can do different things. He said, do business. We're going to talk a little bit about those resources. We're going to talk a little bit about the time. He says, do business. This, this, this coming week, what is your business? Huh? What is your business? Well, I can tell you probably my business here in about an hour, or probably less than an hour, I'm going to be eating lunch. Amen? Yeah, yeah. That, I have that business every day. Every day. I, I don't miss a meal. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it may be a, I may be a, a, a pack of crackers, but I'm not going to miss a meal. All right. I mean, I'm serious about that. That is something, something I do. Some of you have a meal plan this week. You've already got your meal plan ready and done for, for this week. Some of you've got some things you've got to get done. There, there's some deadlines you're facing and you've got to work on that. Maybe got some projects that, that are going on that, that, are, that you want to finish. We all have plans for the next week, but what are our plans when it comes to the kingdom of God? Remember, the disciples, they're ready to usher in the kingdom of God. And Jesus says, no, you've got to wait a little bit here. It's not time. You've got work to do. So what is, as this is the message on stewardship, stewardship in the areas of our life, folks, is God on the plan for next week? Hmm? Is God on the plan? Is God on the plan for your abilities? Is God on the plan for your resources? Is God on the plan for your time? As we think of Jesus saying here, do business. Do business till I return. Do business. Until I come. The old King James would say, Occupy. Take your place. Until I come. Oh, today, church, God has given unto you and me the gospel. Has, God has given to us the gospel, that sacred trust of, of giving the gospel and sharing the gospel. How the gospel message, oh, today... We can roll back time, roll back to 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ was dying on the cross for our sins and the, the sins of the world. Oh, how we could see that today. That would definitely impact and that would affect us in regards to what we do this coming week. God has given you abilities. Are you using them for God or are you just using them for myself? It's easy to be selfish and just use them for ourselves, but... What about for God? What about for God? Our resources. God has given to us our resources. Everything that we have, everything that belongs to us is because of God. All right? We are the stewards of those things. For right now, one day someone else will be stewards of what we have. But it all belongs to God. We are to view it that way of what we have belongs to that of him and that we are to use him. Today, today uh, we, are, we receive an offering today out there on the table. As, as you leave today, do you have an offering for the Lord? Have you, have you given to the Lord? All right? I remember I had a, a disgruntled member many, many years ago. Said, you know, uh, Brother Charles, I don't like the way, uh, the, way the, mon the money is being spent at, at the church. And I'm going to withhold. I'm not going to give my money. I thought, well, number one, it's not your money. It's his money. Amen. All right? It's his money. It, belong, it belongs to him. And I don't think I'd want to be on the side of taking the Lord's money. Do you? I don't. I don't want any part of that. But we've got to realize here, <laughs> it's not my money. It's not my house. It's not my accounts. It's, it's not my car. It is what God has entrusted me to use during this lifetime for that of his honor 
and that of his glory. And believe me, folks, you want to listen, you want to definitely pay attention to the end of the message because the master deals with the servant. The master deals with the servant. And then also, as we think do business, it is time. It is time. The clock is ticking, folks. The clock is ticking. The Apostle Paul whispering in my ear, Charles, remember, remember what, I, what I said uh, to the churches, uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yes, we as God's people, we've got to be using our, our abilities. Yes, as God's people, we've got to be using our resources for the kingdom of God. Yes, we've got to re be redeeming the time that we have for the Lord. Do business until I come. Well, <clears throat> in this passage of Scripture, we begin to see what happened. We see the end result. The master comes back. The master comes back, and there is accountability that is there. There's accountability, and we have three of the ten servants. We see that they are accountable to the master. Well, let me tell you, folks, Jesus is also sharing with us today that we are accountable to him. Just as those servants came in and stood before the master, you and I today, one day we will stand before Jesus Christ, and we will give an account of our bag of meanness that he has given to you and me and what we did with them. One did well. One did well. Notice in the passage of Scripture of what happened. Here. And so it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded his servants to whom he had killed. He called them. One day we're going to be called, folks. And that's an appointment we're not going to miss. Whenever we're called to stand before God, we're going to stand before God. I don't know where we'll all be, but we're going to be standing right in front of him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. He called him. The master did, Jesus said in this parable. And then in verse number 16, then came the first saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. I guess he had to have a wheelbarrow. Jesus talked about this man had received one bag of money, and now he has ten bags of money to come back. To bring to the master. In verse number 17, he says, And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Now, those words echo through the Bible. Well done, good servant. Remember, Jesus spoke on this on another occasion about those who had done well and those who had not done well. There were the two groups that we find, the lost and the saved, are always throughout Scripture. Jesus said, one day there's a group going to stand. He says, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In your name have we not cast out devils? And in your name have we done many, many wonderful works? And Jesus will say, depart. I never knew you. Depart. I will never knew you. And but there's another group that comes in. Another group that comes in and he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast done well over a few things. I'm going to make you a ruler over many. Does this, does this not look like parallel? He said to them, Well done, good and good servant. Because you were faithful in very little now, not just one bag of money. I'm going to put you over ten cities. I'm going to reward you. Now, you say, now, is this talking about financial investment here? No, let me, let me make sure this is not talking about financial investments here. This is what you're doing with your life. What you're doing with your life. This is what, this is what Jesus Christ is trying to stress the importance of doing for him. One did well. One did well. But we also know, sec as we move on to number three, one did fair. One did well, one did fair. Notice, it says, and the second one came saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. 
Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. Did fair. He went and invested. He didn't have a wheelbarrow. He probably had it in, in, in his arms. Look here, look here, look here, master. Look what I have for you. Folks, I think that's where most of us fit in the five. I don't claim to be the best. I don't claim to be the best. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the mediocre kind of guy. <laughs> but we're faithful. One did well, one did fair. And Jesus, Jesus says in this parable, the master said, okay, you got five, you got five uh, bags of mina. You're going to be ruler over five cities. What does this mean? Let me tell you what it means. God rewards whatever you do for him. God rewards. Heavenly rewards, eternal rewards. Things that are beyond here and now. Because as we well know, we, yes, well, there is the end of time, but man, there's a lot to go at the end of time. <laughs> and as we think of here, God rewarding what we do with our life. God rewards what we do with our weekly plan, folks. Here we see two cases. One, one did very well. And one did pretty good. He said to them, you also be over five cities. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Same thing for us today. God will reward everything I, thought, I like what the old hymn says. The old hymn says, every work for Jesus will be blessed. Every work. Every work in your life that you do for God will be blessed by the hand of God. Not based on me, but that's just who that God is. That's why we need the good, well, that's why we need the good lesson of stewardship. The good lesson of stewardship. But then, we had one that did well, one that did fair, and then we find one did not. One did not. One did not in our passage of Scripture, and we have a lengthy passage of Scripture on this one did not. It says that another came saying, Master, here's your mina, which I have put away in a handkerchief. For I feared you, because you're an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And notice what the master says. Very, very important to watch, read this. And he said to them, out of your own mouth I will judge you. Okay, I am going with what you're saying. I'm regarding what you're saying is the truth here. We're going to go with that. Well, by me going with that, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to judge you, you wicked servant. Let's go with that plan. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did deposit, reaping what I didn't sow. And if you rule, if you go with that frame of thinking, that, that you're thinking that this is what kind of man I am, and you think when I come back and you're sitting there and you're just holding the bag of money and you haven't done anything at all, what do you think I'm going to do to you? I'm going to judge you. Out of your wicked mouth I will judge you because you have done nothing. Nothing. And that's what he did. He did nothing. He did nothing. How sad. Had potential. Had the ability. He could do these things, but he chose not to. What about you and me? What are we choosing to do? What are we choosing to do today, folks? Are we going to try for the ten? Are we going to try for the five? Or are we going to settle like this one here on one did not. Jesus said, I'll judge you. Like I say, going to stand. Going to stand before God. But what about God? 
What about the faithfulness of God? Is not the faithfulness of God with us every day of our life? Is not the love of God with us every day of our life? This is what God has provided. This is what God has promised. And he says, this is what I'm going to do every day of our life. And out of that love, out of that commitment, out of that faithfulness that God gives to you and me every day of our life, we should work on the stewardship. We should work on the stewardship of, of, of planning for God and, and working for him and, and expanding the kingdom of God. So I'm going to ask you a question today. How's your love? Hmm? How's your love? You say, oh, Brother Charles, there's many that are, that are better than I am. I'm not the best. What God wants is your availability, folks. Your availability. Let him handle the best. But this one here, mm-mm. No. Notice in verse 23, he says, Why then did you not put my money in the bank? The least you could have done was carried it to the bank where I could have collected some interest, but you didn't even do that. You cost me. You cost me. Wow, what a, what a question. What a statement. Are we costing God today? Because the lack thereof, oh, a lot of times we think, well, someone else will do it. Somebody else will do it. Well, that, that is the role and job of the pastor. Well, let me remind you, dear believers in Jesus Christ, we are the body of Christ. Every one of us, each one of us has a ministry to do. And I emphasize that. I emphasize that. Why do I emphasize that? Because of the rest of the chapter. In verse number 24, as he says there, and he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has ten minas. All right, since you didn't do anything, take that away, give it to that guy over there that's got the wheelbarrow full. And he said to those who, verse, 20, or, verse 25, but they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. Now, wait a minute, Jesus. This guy's already got a bunch. Why has he got a bunch? Because he's been doing business for the kingdom of God. But this one that does not doing anything, he's going to lose. He's going to lose. Notice what he says in verse number 26. For I say to you that to everyone who has will be given. Each one of us, we have our bag of minas. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. The master gave to someone else because he would not use it. He would not use it. You and I know that we forget do we not? I forget. Especially if I'm not doing something. Sometimes I forget how to do something. Do I have a witness anywhere? <laughs> do you forget to do anything? Yeah. Yeah, we forget to do things. Because we have not done them frequently. And we lose that ability to do them. And we have to go back all over and learning that again. Again. Oh, folks, as your pastor, I don't want God taking away anything from you. And that's why I'm standing here today, that God has given us so many things. And we are to use what he's given us. Because whenever I look at this great passage of Scripture... You know the great theological deep principle that I see in this passage of Scripture? Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. And how sad it would to be 
to lose something that God had given to use for his honor and his glory, yet we chose not to. And then we lost it. That's why we need the spiritual discipline of stewardship in our life. And like as I said before, all of this is connected, folks. All of it is connected. It's connected to stewardship of what we're going to do with what God has given to you and me. And folks, I stand before you today, every one of us have been given much. Have been given much. But what are we going to do? Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we come to you, my what a passage of Scripture And we see what the master does. Father, today may we take seriously the stewardship. Our abilities. Our resources. Our time that we have. Let us consider it seriously. As we hear the words of your son, say, do business until I come. Expand my kingdom until I come. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Will you stand as we sing together? If you made the decision today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to celebrate that new start with you. Please call our church office at 270-527-9696 so we can encourage you on your new journey. If you are in need of prayer, we have prayer partners waiting to join in praying for you. Please call our church office at 270-527-9696. Again. That's 270-527-9696. Thank you for being part of our service today. Our prayer at Zion's cause is that this service drew you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to you joining us again next week. of the pastor, staff, and congregation. May God richly bless you and keep you. This has been a production of Zion's Cause Baptist Church.